Welcome to the Time to Fly podcast. It's time to give your business wings and take flight to achieve more impact, influence, and income with unique perspectives, tools, and tips from successful entrepreneurs and business professionals to help your business fly. Here to educate, encourage, and entertain you with their own unique perspectives and experience, plus sharing anecdotes of growing up as cowgirls. Here's your host, Jill Fleming. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Time to Fly, Give Your Business Wings. I'm your host, Jill Fleming, and today I want to talk to you about a conference I got to attend last week. It was the Watermark Conference for Women that was held in Silicon Valley. I got a unique opportunity to be able to attend at the last minute, and I was so excited when I found out who the speakers were going to be, and one of them was my absolute favorite author, Brene Brown. When I found out she was going to be speaking at this conference, I was so excited. I could hardly contain myself. And other speakers that I got to hear while I was there were also Serena Williams, as well as Whitney Wolf Hurd, who is the CEO of Bumble. So attending the Watermark Conference was very inspiring, to say the least. There were around 6,500 women and some pretty awesome men that were at this conference. And some really amazing sponsors as well. It was so empowering to walk in this room of 6,500 mostly women all coming together for this empowerment conference. In the spirit of being that leading learner, I wanted to pass on some of my favorite quotes that were shared at the conference. I'm also going to put a link I'm also going to put a link to the conference sessions in the show notes. The sessions aren't up yet, but they say they should be available soon. So I highly encourage you to go out and listen to the sessions from Brene Brown and from Serena Williams. Those were really powerful sessions. I would highly recommend you listen to them. And then there's also on that link, you can listen to past sessions as well. To dive right in, Brene Brown only had about 20 minutes to speak. I want to share with you a few of the quotes that Brene Brown shared with us at the conference and just let you think about those. Here is a few to consider. Imperfections are not inadequacies. They are reminders that we are all in this together. Here's another one. Courage is as contagious as fear. How many of us focus on being right more than getting it right? You are more courageous than you think. You are more powerful than you believe. Don't let the stories you make up hold you back. Be courageous and be brave. Courageous leaders are never silent around hard things. Your job as a leader is to excavate the unsaid, to bring into words what's happening but isn't being named. She also said, avoiding having tough conversations about race or gender because it's uncomfortable is the definition of privilege. Overcoming that barrier is essential to courageous leadership. And the number one barrier to courageous leadership is not fear. It's how we put up barriers. We want to look like we know versus being willing to learn. We want to be perfect. The hardest barrier to overcome is being willing to have those hard conversations. Everyone's afraid to have conversations around diversity, equity, and inclusion because they're afraid to screw it up. But to not have those conversation is showing your privilege. Courageous leaders are never afraid to have conversations around hard things. When you're leading people, you can't control the stories they're making up, but you can always leave the door open for them to check in. And she shared a life hack of saying many of the people that she's worked with that are courageous leaders have a version of this. But something that she uses is the story I'm telling myself about this. And how many of us think up stories in our head that aren't true, especially as women, we could default to what she calls a half-ass litany of, I feel like a half-ass career woman, a half-ass mom, half-ass wife, half-ass daughter, what is really at the heart of that situation. And that we are a meaning-making species. In the absence of data, we make up stories. Those stories then activate shame triggers, fear, and worries of inadequacy. And what happens is you often start to believe those stories you're making up when actually it's just pulling from all of those internal fears that we have. And it's actually part of our brain is when something hard happens, the brain looks for the story so it can protect you. 
And then the brain also rewards us with a calming reaction when it has a story, regardless of the accuracy of that story. And so really taking a look at what's happening when something is going on. And Brene gave an example of an interaction between her and her husband. Her husband, she was in the process of, I believe, getting her latest book out. And her husband comes home from work and looks in the fridge and like huffs and goes, ugh, there's no ham. And it immediately triggered her to be mad. And she came at her husband and said, well, of course there's no ham. I've had this, this, and this going on and went immediately on the defensive. Her husband was like, whoa, 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 what's going on? And she went to her life hack of the story that I'm telling myself is that I am inadequate as a mom, I'm inadequate as a wife, and that I haven't been taking care of you good enough. And I loved what the response was, is she said that her husband said, wait a minute, he's like, I do the grocery shopping. And I've never once expected you to have dinner on the table when I get home from work. So it was just really interesting. And it kind of diffused her story that she had gone to. And she come back at her husband and she's like, well, no BS. Just tell me, what were you really thinking when you was like, ugh, there's no ham? And she said her husband thought about it for a little while and came back and he's like, well, I'd really wanted a ham sandwich for lunch. And when I got to the place for lunch, they were out of ham. And so when I got home, I was really hungry and I was still looking forward to having a ham sandwich. And I got home and I was like, ugh, there's no ham. So in the end, it really had absolutely nothing to do with her. But she had made up a story around it. It really just had to do that he was upset or miffed or whatever that there was no ham because he really wanted a ham sandwich. And so I really got a chuckle out of that of how often do we make up those stories of somebody says something or somebody does something and we think it means something about us when it has nothing to do with us, but we immediately go to those shame stories, those places that we are insecure and make it about us because then our brain feels better. And once we have a story around it, then we don't have to wonder why or be curious about what's going on. We have our story and our brain's happy that we have our story, even if it's inaccurate. So I love that example. And I love that life hack that she shared of When you are triggered and when things are going on, be really digging into it and be like, okay, the story I'm telling myself is, and then go into that story and then really look at that story of like, okay, is there any accuracy to the story at all? I love that life hack and I'm glad that I'm able to pass that on to you. And I really hope that you can implement that in your lives to help protect you from going into story and then really causing strife within your life. Those were some of the the great words of wisdom that came from Brene Brown. Some words of wisdom that came from Whitney Wolf Hurd, who is a CEO of Bumble, that I really appreciated is she talked about, we can't alienate one gender from the other. We have to be united. And that's really true of what was being talked about at this women's conference is really engaging and having support from women and men. And both Whitney and Serena both talked about their husbands of being very supportive partners and how they wouldn't be able to be the successful women they are if they didn't have those supportive partners who were willing to be a partner and willing to support them in their dreams as they as wives support their husbands in theirs. Serena Williams talked about how being a professional athlete, being a mother, being a wife, how that really is a lot to juggle and how she goes about that. And I saw an article, I was looking more deeply into that. And I saw an article that her husband actually wrote, who is a, I believe he's like a big investment banker into investments. And they are both very successful in their careers. And he talks about, he's like, it's not very sexy. But at the beginning of the year, we get out our calendars and we plan how we're going to be together. She has a match that she needs to be at, so he'll travel to be with her. 
And then when she's working and practicing, and he said that sometimes, you know, her career has to take precedence because it has a finite life. Even Serena Williams, when she was on stage, mentioned she's like in the next question mark number of years, how much of her longer she has to be a professional athlete, because she's not quite sure how much longer that's going to be. With that, I'm going to take a quick break for a sponsor. And when we come back, I'll share with you some more wisdom that we got from Serena Williams at the conference. This episode is sponsored by the book Freedom to Fly, the visionary leader's guide to unlocking your unique freedom code to confidently create more impact, influence, and income. Get your copy of this best-selling book on Amazon.com. Welcome back. In talking about the Watermarks Conference for Women that was held in Silicon Valley, there were so many amazing women at the conference. And before the break, I was talking to you a little bit about Serena Williams, and Serena Williams spoke to us during the lunch and she really had an amazing message to share around being authentic. And one of the things that she said on authenticity is no one is perfect. Be authentic, accept who you are and want to be a better you. A few things that Serena said, she's like, there is no wrong way to be a woman. And I found that really interesting as, as women, we are so hard on ourselves of we're not getting it quote right. And with what Brene Brown had said earlier in the day, and then Serena with her words of wisdom too, of there is no wrong way to be a woman. And she talked about authenticity as well of saying that no one is perfect and be authentic, accept who you are and want to be a better you. And Serena talked about how she is so busy being a wife, being a mother, being an athlete, being an entrepreneur. She has a fashion line as well that she doesn't have the energy to be anyone other than herself because she just can't keep up the masks. And so she works on being her authentic self and make herself better so that when she's working in all these different faucets that they all work together well, but she's not putting on a mask. She talked a lot about taking more risks as women And she said, ask for what you want. If you never take the risk, you'll never get the reward. And that you are what you think. You are what you say. And if you're constantly thinking negative thoughts, then that's what you will bring to yourself. And I think that's just the the law of attraction. The more and more that I learn from people and study and read books, the, the law of attraction of what you focus on grows and expands. So if you're focusing on the positive or focusing on where you want to be, that's going to grow and expand. And if you're focusing on the negative, that's going to grow and expand. So where are you focusing your energy? And that's one of the favorite quotes of mine. I can't remember who I heard it from is that going through life is like driving a vehicle. And so there's a reason that the windshield is bigger than the rear view mirror. You're supposed to be focusing way more energy and effort on going forward of what you can see going forward versus what's behind you. And another quote that Serena said is like, you don't have to wait to be given power. You already have it. And that you have to believe in yourself. She said every single match she's ever played, she has thought, I won't win today. But she takes that negative thought and mentally like puts it in a paper bag and throws it away. And said, it's okay to not feel confident in a particular moment, but acknowledge it, throw it away, and move on. And subscribe to the good thoughts. Don't focus on the bad thoughts. We all have negative thoughts. We all have things that pop up. But it's a matter of choice of what do you choose to focus on. She also said, if you don't take the risk, that you'll never get the rewards. She said, with risk come reward and what women are missing out. She also said, if you don't take the risk, you'll never get the rewards. With risk come reward. And men out here are more comfortable taking risks to advance their careers and women are missing out. And Whitney Wolf Hurd, who is the CEO of Bumble, was actually interviewing Serena and she gave an example for her company that at one point it was 85% women. And she had noticed that the women in her company weren't asking for raises. And as her business grew and evolved, she started having more men on the team. 
and that men would be more willing to come in and ask for a raise. And it's nothing against the men for being willing to ask for what they want. It's as women, where are we not willing to take that risk to ask for what we want as well? And Serena gave an example that she'd experienced too, that she had a a female physiotherapist that she'd worked with and she had a male hitting coach. And as time went on, the male hitting coach had asked for raises multiple times. And over that time, the female physio hadn't asked for a raise once. And so Serena went to her and said, hey, I'm not comfortable with this. You need to own your value. And whether it's with me or with another client, you need to ask for your value. I'm not comfortable with this. And so it was interesting that both women had experienced it in their respective companies of women not being willing to ask for their value. And that really got me to thinking we have a wage gap in our society between men and women and how much of that is the responsibility of us as women to be asking for our value. And I know it's also potentially societal programming of that old adage of not speaking up and as women being seen and not heard. But what do we need to do as women to shift that narrative? So that really was a an interesting thought process for me to think through my own self of really owning that value and stepping up and taking that risk to really ask for what you believe you're worth or even ask for more than we believe that we're worth. So Because oftentimes my experience is as men are more comfortable taking risks and with women, we want to know exactly that we can do 100% of everything that we say that we can do. Whereas my experience of men is they will say yes and figure it out. And so what can we do as women to say yes and figure it out as well? These are just a few of the nuggets of wisdom and quotes that I took away from the Watermark Conference for Women in Silicon Valley. If you have an opportunity to, I highly recommend you attending. It's in February every year. Check out the show notes for the link to the full sessions. I highly recommend you taking a listen and taking away your own nuggets of wisdom. And until next time, it's time to fly. Give your business wings. A big thank you to this episode's sponsor, Freedom to Fly, the visionary leader's guide to unlocking your unique freedom code to confidently create more impact, influence, and income. Get your copy of this best-selling book on Amazon.com. Join our flock. Stay informed of all things Time to Fly by subscribing to our newsletter at timetoflypodcast.com. And be sure to tune in to our next show.